Welcome to today's 3D print. Uh, no live stream today. I'm just too busy packing for Murph. <laughs> I've got to get ready to go. I'm almost done packing. I got a couple more hours of packing to do. I gotta dig into there and try to get my Fairy Queen out of there. I want to bring her. So I figured today I'll show you some of the prints I've made. So stay tuned. I think I've shown you guys my pangolins already. I forgot to bring them last year, so I'm not going to forget to bring my pangolins to Murph this year. I love these guys. They're really cute. <laughs> uh, it's like an endangered critter. And a guy designed this to help promote them. Awareness of them. So you got, you know, regular scale. And of course I supersized it. I also made a little 25% scale one too. I think I showed you that guy's already, but I got a little tiny one. Um, couple of prints I made for my mom. She loves skulls. So I made her some decorations that she can hang up on her wall. I thought they were pretty neat. This is, I want to say this is Iron Red from Paramount 3D. I think that's Iron Red. And um, this is Atomic Filaments Ultra Green. It's like it really shines in ultraviolet light. So if you put a UV light on this, just blows up in UV light. So that was pretty neat. An oldie but a goodie. This, I love this. Someone posted a resin printed one and they didn't believe me you can make these with FDM printers. So I want to show them that yeah you can print the pie cup with an FDM printer and have all the numbers come out. There you go. It really is quite an amazing print really. one of my favorites. I, I keep this one safe because I treasure this one. It took a long, long time to print. This is actually printed on my one health duplicator i3, the um, Modern Price Maker Select one health duplicator i3. This is actually printed on that. And this is in one of my favorite filaments that you can't get anymore. Exelvon. Um, my hair's a wreck. I've been going back and forth to the car cleaning it out. <laughs> and um, I got one more print that I'll finish sometime tonight that I'm going to bring with me. It had a little failure, but it'll still look really cool. I keep getting intermittent jams on the 0.2 millimeter nozzle and I don't know why. It's like it'll be printing along fine and then it'll clog or jam momentarily and then resume like nothing happened but of course now you have a missing layer. So you have a little gap and if that gap is too big it eventually can knock over a little piece of the model and that's what happened here. I knocked over a little piece of the model but it was able to recover and continue so it's another 200 hour print <laughs> so I'm letting it go <laughs> it's at 165 hours and 92 percent it takes about two hours per one percent so um it, it looks beautiful though it looks oh, I can't wait to show it off but um that's cool then mech G he uh, I asked him I requested he model the um first spaceship to Venus and he did such a good job on it oh man look at this I, I still have the nose cone. I gotta find it. Hopefully, I'll find it before I leave for Murph. But I want to bring this. But this is incredible. It's one of my favorite old sci-fi spaceships. It's a cheesy, corny sci-fi movie, but the ship was so beautiful. I love the ship. It's actually supposed to have the engines in the nacelles, the pods on the outside. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put the engine right in the middle. I know how to launch it with the engines on the outside. Um, three engines, three. Kevlar cords attaching the model to the launch pad with the eye hooks here and here so that the Kevlar cord passes across the nozzle of the engine. This way all three have to ignite in order to burn all three cords and release the model from the pad. Better to burn two engines sitting there on a pad than to have only two ignite and watch this beautiful model prying itself into the ground. That would suck. <laughs> and then um, DSK the uh, name's DSK something. I'll have a link down below, of course. Maybe later tonight I'll have the links. Because um, I could do that when it's dark. I need to use these daylight hours to pack. But he's working on the original Enterprise. And, oh, it's beautiful. So here is the saucer section finished. It had a little problems up here. It's a little rough. I think it's because I printed it like this. Even with the um, non-moving bed of the Ender 5, there's still a little bit of wiggle when the nozzle moves around the model just because of how 
tall and skinny it is. But beyond that, the results are very cool. This is E-Sun's E-Silk white. Absolutely beautiful model. I can't wait to finish printing the rest of it. I was hoping to have it finished for Murph, but that's not going to happen. I was hoping to have enough of it finished to... But I'll, I'll bring the saucer section, of course. But I don't have enough of it finished to put it together. But man, that's just cool. <laughs> that's just a cool model. That took like 40 hours to print with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. I don't get good results with the 0.8 millimeter nozzle. I don't know why. I get great results with the 2, the 4, and the 1.2, but the 0.8 just... I even thought it was a cheesy nozzle, so I put an E3D original, you know, genuine E3D um, 0.8mm nozzle, and it's no improvement. I don't know, it's something about the 0.8mm, I'm just not getting the cleanest results. You'll see that in this model here. Um, this is a model I made. I'll have it on Thingiverse soon. Um, back in 2014, somebody posted a Voronoi rocket, and I decided to go to town with it and make it into a flying rocket. So, it actually has centering rings. And I, of course, elongated it for CPCG relationship issues. And you can see there's a bunch of string. That's because I have a built-in support layer so that this can print like that. Now, you see, it should look like this. And this was printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height. And, for example, this should have printed fine. But all of my top layers tend to look like that. It's something to do with the 0.8 millimeter nozzle. If I use the 1.2, no problem. If I use the 0.4, no problem. The 0.2, no problem. But the 0.8, I guess I just haven't got it dialed in or something. It's just, I don't know. Maybe the, I don't know. It's just the printer doesn't like the 0.8 millimeter nozzle. The print quality is just not as good. You know, it's not as clean. It prints. It prints fine. It's just not as clean. Now, these have holes in the middle. That is so that I can send a 24 millimeter motor mount tube straight up the center of this whole thing. This way the hot engine and the ejection gases never touch the plastic. On top of that, it's going to have an internal shock cord, or internal launch lug, which will run right up the center here. And those are also alignment holes. So those will allow you to glue these together with the tube inside, of course, and have it all aligned correctly. So that you will have a complete rocket. How cool is that? I love that. I think that is such a cool looking rocket. There you go. Now you get a good view. It's going to fly just like that, except it will have a paper tube going up the middle. I think that's enough fin area and the rocket's long enough that I have a, should have a good CGCP relationship. It should be better than 2 to 1 for by diameter. So it should be stable, but I'll, I'll spin test it, of course. Because it's actually pretty heavy uh, it's probably three or four hundred grams so it's going to take a, a pretty hefty punch of a motor i think a d12 will fly it but this might be better on like an f15 then i experimented with heating up plastic so this is like a doily and it prints flat so of course it prints perfect and then you just lay it on top of a bowl in the oven and you let it heat up and then mold it around the bowl and so you end up with this incredibly delicate print that would be impossible to print otherwise. You could not print it like this. I mean, you could, but it would not look that good. <laughs> um, and the fast print, I think it took 20 minutes. It took longer in the oven, letting it slowly heat up so it doesn't get too hot than it did to actually print it. It's pretty darn neat. I thought that was pretty. And um, I can't show you the big pair because they're packed. I got a bunch of other new prints, but I packed them all for Murph. But I also played around with those double action pliers. This was printed on the Ender 5 with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. I am very, very happy with those results. Um, tough print. I actually had a tough time getting this to print, to print larger. Um, like, for example, this one here with the 0.8 millimeter nozzle failed. Again, 0.8 millimeter nozzle just driving me crazy. I don't know why. Um, poor overhang performance and. Although I guess I haven't tried any normal layer wall overhang type prints with the 1.2 either. It's possible that it's just too much heat in the filament. So it shrinks and warps and bends and doesn't have enough time to cool. Most of my larger nozzle prints are vase mode style or very safe prints. So it's the sketchier ones that tend to go a little wonky. But um, I'll have a video later of the giant ones. I made these gigantic 
in green silk on the TiVo Neros. Ne I still think they misspelled that. <laughs> but then, the real prize. I think I showed you guys this on stream, but I haven't showed you in a video yet, so this should be really nice in a high quality video. I printed the Medieval Castle, 200 millimeter tall, so it's not even that large. But I printed it in eSun's red silk on the Ender 5 with the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. It took 171 hours, 169 or 171 hours, something like that, right around 170 hours to print this. And it came out spectacular. <laughs> I mean, I gotta, I gotta make a bubble wrap box to transport this because I'm not letting, letting nothing happen to this. I don't even have to describe it. I'm just gonna show it to you. putting my head behind it so that the face detection doesn't activate and it focuses on me instead of the model the top layers are absolutely stunning look at the entryway the staircase the path the little trees every single little window and tile every detail is just incredible I love this model. <laughs> this, is, this is going to be one of my prized prints that I'll never give up. This this is pretty. This came out so nice that <laughs> dropping it would probably kill me. <laughs> It'd be like, no. Oh, I would so, I would die if I dropped this or if somebody dropped it. Oh, my God. You can see even the top layers inside there. Look at that. Look how they shine. That top smooth surface is so smooth it shines. It did such a nice job on this, and without a UPS. <laughs> Every day I'd log into the camera and say, please don't have failed. <laughs> but it, it did it. It finished the whole thing. I have it on a UPS now. <laughs> but that's, I love that model. If you're going to be at Murph, you're going to want to see this. this. This red silk is really nice. Although Polyalchemy now has a red one too, so we're going to have to compare them and see who gets the better red. But um, this is the, the um, skirt. It didn't really need one, but I forgot to turn it off, so it's there. But yeah, there it is. So that's it. Um, hopefully I'll be back to a live stream next week. I'm going to try to have just like a printer video for this Saturday. Um, I may attempt to do a short live stream from Murph. Um, call it right around noon. I may attempt that. It might be better if I try it Friday night during early setup. There won't be as much there, but um, the congestion on the network should also be lower, so I should be able to get a better quality stream. Um, but I may try that. Just like a short little 10-minute video, just walk around, show you guys some of the stuff. I won't be able to interact too much because I'll be walking, holding the camera, so it's going to be pretty hard to, you know, if, if a comment pops up on the screen, I'll try to reply to it, but um, it's going to be pretty tricky. But um, I figure you guys would like that, get some real-time footage from Murph and I'll, if I can if the network allows me I'll try it again on Saturday and maybe Sunday as well because there's going to be a lot of really cool people there it's going to be a nice event uh, JT from Australia he just arrived in Chicago he's at his room so he'll be there for Murph and, um, Ivan Miranda won't be there that sucks I really want to meet him uh, that's it I am sorry I don't have a regular content for today I'm just too busy. As soon as I'm done uploading this video, I'm going right back outside to continue packing because I have to go to work tonight. Um, I got my friend who's helping me to relieve me early tomorrow, 5 o'clock, so that I can get home earlier because i got to leave like 3 o'clock in the morning and pick up my buddy Ron and we're heading out to Murph because I want to get there by like 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon because I think they do early set up like 6. So that will give us 2 hours to get in our room, relax, Maybe snooze a little bit and then head over for early setup and uh, go from there. So the I, I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you the little prints from the Tina too. <laughs> that printer is blowing my mind. It's I have some. I, mean, I put protopasta through it. I put um, 
I haven't tried Petgy through it yet. I bet you it'll print Petgy. I'd have to print slow and cold. Petgy doesn't like low temperatures. And this maxes out at 225. See, so it's a PLA machine, to be honest. But the print quality I'm getting is... In fact, the first bad print I ever got out of the machine was this one. I tried to print my little rocket tiny. And I think this had more to do with the protopasta than the printer. I think this printer just had a tough time with the protopasta. But there's a lot of um, little missed layers, little partial clogs. You can see like this fin's broken because it doesn't have, there's like a missing layer of filament there. But um, a little stringiness just because it's so, uh, this is a, just a ridiculous retraction heavy print at the scale because all of those little spires are so tiny. Um, I don't even know if this would be flyable on a Micromax. Probably too heavy. If it's over 18 grams, it's too heavy. But I just wanted to try it. And not that great. But every other print, every other print I get off this machine is just shockingly good. <laughs> Considering it's a little tiny ship box that's big. It, they did a good job. It's, it's a nice machine. I, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I still have a problem getting it to actually put the nozzle on the bed. Every single print I have to go to tune and, and do baby step down um, 700 um, microns. I, I assume it's microns. It's, it's obviously not millimeters. I'm assuming 700 is 0.7 millimeters. No, it's no, it's actually it's it's way higher than 0.7. That's like 700, so it must be 70, because it's like seven millimeters. I have to drop it almost. Um, it does the bed leveling. It puts the nozzle right where it's supposed to. I adjusted the sensor, but when I go to print, it's not putting the nozzle on the bed. I think it has. To, I think I'm, my start G code is bad. I got to look at their sample G code because this printer homes at the top and then comes down to the bed. So the Z axis limit switch is at the top instead of the bottom. So I have to. Um, I, I think my G code is bad because I've talked to other people who have the Tina two and they're not having this problem. So I'm assuming that something in my maybe I have to start off with a G29 instead of a G28 to tell it to go to the bed because it, it does the home up top and then it does my prime. And here's the here's where I think my G code is a problem. My prime line that I always do for all my prints it does the prime line up top. So it, it brings the Z axis up, it homes to zero, it does the prime line up top, then it comes down and does the print and it misses by seven millimeters. So I think that's just my start G code. So I have to just sit there and go zzz, and lower the baby steps down to like 700. So about seven millimeters. And then it prints fine. It's, it's virtually perfect. I, I, I love the prints that I'm getting out of it. Um, I didn't think I'd be that impressed by a tiny little printer, but I am. It's, it's pretty cool. So that's it. I will see you guys next week. I will probably this weekend at Murph. I'll see a bunch of you there. I'll have a whole ton of Mega Coins with me. And um, I'll see you then. You guys have a good day.